today we're excited to welcome someone who can find Zen while throwing a punch. Olivia Young joins us to talk about switching careers, reinventing the workout, and her favorite food, the delicious sardine. This is School of Hustle, the show where we find advice and inspiration from people who are making their own way. I'm Shannon, the VP of Social here at GoDaddy, and I live and breathe the hustle of business. Today, we're filming from the hustle of it all at the WeWork Times Square in New York City. Everybody, let's give Olivia Young a big warm welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Olivia, you inspire so many people with your vision that boxing and yoga can go hand in hand. Please tell us about your vision for Box and Flow. I started Box and Flow with the idea that everybody has duality. So strength and softness, like this idea of fire and water. And from my personal experience boxing since I was 20 and doing yoga since I was 15, I realized that it was sort of channeling both sides of myself. So boxing really gave me confidence and strength and yoga forced me to slow down and feel. And uh, I was in the corporate world and knew that I needed to create something of my own and I went back to the commitment that was mine every day of boxing and yoga, and I wanted to bring that feeling that I feel to everyone else. What are some of the lessons that you take with you along your journey that you help you be as successful as you are? I literally practice it physically every day. Yeah. So I wake up and I run to like shake off whatever is holding yeah. me, and then I box because it puts me like in the ring. Like you have to be so present when you're boxing. And my class is designed that you're sort of dancing to the rhythm of the beat and you're using your breath and you're using your body as opposed to like boxing like this and like really like being heavy, you're, you're light, you're like water. The best fighters are, are dancers. So I practice this idea of like physically channeling balance in my body, physically, mentally. What sort of impact does box and flow? and this idea, how does that impact your client base? I see people walk in a certain way and I see them walk out 15 minutes later completely different. How so? So you're not fighting anybody but yourself. You're not resisting anybody but yourself and you're not opening up to anybody but you. Like the after happens outside of the room. So I see people walk in shy or insecure or worried or, or completely ego driven. Ultimately, I think I'm teaching resilience and I'm teaching uh, people to just trust themselves. That's right, and when you were starting, you were opening yourself up and vulnerable, like you said, but you were also introducing a pretty new concept. It, it really doesn't exist. Right. And if it's if there has been something in the woodwork, then I call my attorney because yeah, <laughs> it yeah. doesn't exist. And I also just believe that because it's so much of my personal story, yeah. there, there certainly will be boxing and yoga hybrids, but it's I don't even see that that's what I'm teaching. I'm teaching people to open up to the potential that they already have. And, and how do you get people to buy in and believe and catch on? So funny, I, I'm two years in now and yeah. I just finished construction of my space and reinvested yeah. and was like, okay, we're here, let's make it great. Um, but I've never paid for like paid marketing. Yeah. And I think people now are like, what do you mean you don't like do digital marketing? You don't like pay for ads? And I'm like, no, it's just all word of it's mouth. It's word of mouth, yeah. And I think that's the coolest part because just as people walk in a certain way and they leave a certain way, they're telling their friends. Whether it's good or bad, they're telling their friends. I have to switch gears and talk to you about <laughs> sardines because I do believe that you are what you eat. You love the sardine. It might be the most underrated protein in existence. Yeah, I think I that's had, the beauty of it. I had my first sardine with you. You did? I did. You didn't hate it? I did not hate it. No. When I started my business, I, I completely self-funded, self-invested, no partners, no investors. And I went on this thing like the startup diet. So I yeah. was going to like craft my life and eat things that were delicious and not <laughs> make excuses for not taking care of myself. Why sardines? Really good fat. Really good fat, high in protein, $3 a can. I got really into the brands oh. and like literally write sardine guides and make recipes with them. I want to um, go back to something you said a moment ago and you said that you self-funded. Wow. Yeah. Tell me about that. <laughs> it sucks. But it's also, <laughs> it's funny because as much as it sucks, it's the most empowering, invigorating, stress-inducing, um, Cathartic. It's the same as boxing. It's like you feel all yeah. the things. Yeah. I figured out a way to make the most of what I had. Same with my startup diet or the sardine can and make the oil into a vinaigrette. Yeah. I pulled the cash together and I found a space that was 
really cheap for New York rent. Second floor, 1,500 square feet. I painted the walls, I put bags up, and I opened a fitness concept. And it's been the wildest ride, and I'm still self-funded. I just reinvested, and it got like real because I sort of sold off stock that I had like saved. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Um, but it also made me get real about it, like stop being okay, being okay. Like, I don't believe in complacency. I think it's easy in life to fall into a routine of autopilot when Absolutely. things are working. Absolutely, or if they're not working. Exactly. Because it's what you know. Come to and it, it does, And it doesn't mean that it's right. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. My pleasure. Really appreciate you opening up. I want to continue to get personal and play a game <laughs> that we call Hustle Time. You're competitive, and I know you want to get through this entire stack of cards. Let's see how we can do if we put 60 seconds on the clock and say the first thing that comes to mind and we're just gonna try to fly through as many as we can. Okay. Okay? Three, two, one, go. Would you rather fly or talk to animals? Fly. Favorite holiday? Uh, Hanukkah. Instagram or Twitter? Instagram. Binge watch or watch weekly? Binge watch. Your go-to outfit? Uh, black spandex. Vacation, lounge on the beach or active hike? Beach. Dogs or cats? Hike. No, dogs. <laughs> Favorite movie theater or treat? I bring my own candy from the candy store. Sashimi or rolls? Sashimi. Would you rather never get angry or never be envious? Never be envious. Go to karaoke song? No. <laughs> yes or no socks with sandals? Yes. Most irrational fear? Myself. Wine, white or red? Red. One thing you'd want in a desert island with you? Beer. Chardonnay, yay or nay? No. Favorite pastime, music or movies? <laughs> movies! First place you'll visit when you retire? When I retire? Yeah. So we're hot. Uh, early bird or night owl? Uh, early bird. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Favorite part of your day? Morning. Top best part of your workout? The beginning. Personal trainers, effective or too much cash? Cash. Fireplace, oh fire God, pit. Ah! Oh! I have that. Minute. This is amazing. We did a good one? That, that good? Okay. 21, 22, 23? Oh this is the highest of all time. Yes! I told you, I'm competitive. <laughs> This next set of questions is um, a handful of entrepreneurial questions that we ask every entrepreneur, and it's nice to see how different people answer the same thing. Mm -hmm. Favorite part of your day? My morning, 5 to 7 a.m. I eat breakfast, a sweet potato with yeah. coconut oil, and then I just like grind. I love it. Best piece of advice you've ever gotten? Don't take advice, because it's <laughs> typically, <laughs> or it's what I tell myself. Advice is so often a projection of somebody else's experience. I know. Create your own experience. It's true. People have a, a limited viewpoint, and sometimes they give you advice with that limited viewpoint, and it might not be the right thing for you. Right. So with that said, worst piece of advice? Don't follow your dreams. And it wasn't said like that. It was said through a projection of self. Oh, it, yeah, I bet it was. Hmm. Well, look at you now. <laughs> um, how do you use your career to inspire others? every second of my day by being completely honest at what is working and what more so is not. Ever felt like walking away? Absolutely. In a way of like, what am I doing? I think that's just part of life, whether you're a business owner or not. That's right. One thing you still need to learn. Everything. What do you want people to learn from you? I want them to learn through my experience in every which way from like, year one to year 32, what works and what doesn't from me, my experience, so that it could potentially help them in theirs. What's next for you? I'm ideally opening a second Fox and Flow. I'm working on a leotard line. Ah, no way! And writing a book. Really? Yeah. When do we get to see prototypes? <laughs> Within six months. Oh, that's so cool. Why not? Who inspires you? This is so cheesy. I'm inspired by everybody I meet. Because whether it's like a, a positive inspiration or a negative inspiration, it, it teaches me something about myself. Who challenges you? Oof, this is one I get a lot. Um, everybody. Mm -hmm. Nothing is ever as it seems. Nothing is ever any like exactly as you pictured it or ends up as you want it to be. So I think it's all about like having less expectation and being pleasantly surprised. I think that starts with you too. Like I always speak to, you know, when was the last time you took your breath away? When was the last time you really surprised yourself or proved to yourself you could do something? Well, we let everybody know in social that you were coming. <laughs> I have two questions from uh, our tribe. And the first comes from Julia. Okay. 
What are the benefits of doing yoga fusion classes versus classic vinyasa? The benefits of fusion, so I guess box and flow would be a fusion. Absolutely. Um, it's incredibly high intense, so it's 35 minutes nonstop cardio strength cathartic release, heavy bag work, or even shadow boxing into a 15 minute vinyasa. So you really like get all the way up to come all the way down. And vinyasa is taught that you like start with sun salutation, so it really gets your heart rate and your sweat going. And then you sort of come into balance and come down to shavasana. It's a different, completely different emotion and physical experience. Namrata asks, what advice do you have for someone who is nervous about taking a class? Why? <laughs> My advice would be, you don't know until you know. So if you don't try, you yeah. might always be thinking about it. There is one more question from our tribe, and this question comes from our favorite pug. <laughs> is it Noodle? It's Noodle. Here he is. Noodle has mastered the downward dog. <laughs> and he is ready for some new yoga challenges. Can we do the downward dog, Noodle? That oh. looks like it. What should Noodle do to strengthen his lumbar and improve his physique? You have to soften your shoulders. Oh, you hear that? So the downward dog, you have to soften your shoulders and pull your shoulder blades together and then really press your palms into the ground. Yeah. So you have to stay grounded in your hands, noodle, and then lift your tailbone up and back as you soften your shoulders down and suck your belly to your spine. That's it. That's and it. breathe. You hear that? I think he's trying right now. I <laughs> just breathe. <laughs> I made noodles last night, noodle, but they were made of plantains. Plantain <laughs> noodles. How cool is that? Very cool. Have you heard of that? Um, we loved having you here today. Thank you. This was a lot of fun. Thank really you. appreciate you sharing and opening up and inspiring everybody. Of course. Um, I want to end with um, a very thoughtful, motivational saying, if you will, kind of like at the end of a meal and you break open that fortune cookie and you get that last thought. Yeah. I'm going to read you three quotes. Okay. Please tell me which quote resonates the most with you and why. Okay. Okay. The first one. It is better to fail in originality than to succeed in imitation. Number two. Success usually comes to those who are too busy to be looking for it. Number three, don't be afraid to give up the good to go for the great. I would say the first one. I think the key to life, and this is something I'll always be working on, is just being exactly who you are. So to me, success is self-defined. Like, self-definition is your definition. So I don't, I don't subscribe to imitation because it's falsehood. It's, it's an opportunistic way to potentially find success through other people. And I think our greatest value is just being who we are. We had a great conversation. <laughs> we did. If you like what you saw, follow at Live Young and at Box and Flow on social. And follow at GoDaddy too. We are bringing entrepreneurs like the fabulous Olivia to you every Wednesday at one o'clock on Facebook premiere, YouTube, Instagram stories, IGTV, Teasers across Twitter and LinkedIn everywhere. Follow GoDaddy everywhere. And do not miss out on more conversations like this. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. This was great. Thank Thanks, you. everybody. Thank you.